Mini Wargamer David from MiniWargaming.com here with Luca. Welcome, Wargamers, to my second game of the old world, which I'm playing with you, Luca. I'm very excited about that. Right. Because you've been playing for years. Uh, yeah, this is fundamentally the same game, yeah. It's the same game. Yeah. So it's not new to you, but it is new because it's new edition. It's excitingly new. It's excitingly yes. new. I've been waiting five years for this. All right, Luca. I'm learning. This is brand new, so I'm going to ask you questions about my list. Yep. So starting with the Demon Prince, which is my general, what does he got? Oh, he's hit Dark Apotheosis, so he is the best of the best, the dream of all chaos here. He's going to be your general, marked okay. by Corn. naturally. He's got wings, mm -hmm. and he's so kitted up with already good upgrades, you don't really need to invest more into him. He does have a brazen collar to give him magic resistance, though, because obviously he doesn't want to mess with that stuff. What does that do? Uh, anytime I try and cast a spell at him, it'll be negative two to my roll. Oh, okay. That's good. This is a hero. Yeah, we got an exalted hero today. The old Wolfric the Wanderer model, it's honestly one of my favorites. Uh, he is obviously going to be marked by Corn. Obviously. He found himself a Chaos Rune Sword in his ever long path to glory that his buddy the Demon Prince has already conquered, I suppose. And he also has a brazen collar. He's so, like like the Demon Prince, he's such a good fighter on his own. He's got some, such good equipment base. He just, he just needs a fancy sword. Fancy. And we got a battle line, troops. What is it actually called? Core, it's the core of your army here. Yeah, these are your blessed warriors of chaos that follow the exalted hero into battle. They are, as you can see, marked by corn. Uh, gave them double hand weapons here just to go and suit with the models we have. Uh, these are obviously Age of Sigmar models using the mini working forge movement tray to be applicable in the old world here. Uh, there's 18 of them because the points allowed for it. They're going to have full command, and that means they got a banner. That's an idiot with a flag. They got a champion and a musician in the unit as well. Did you say an idiot with a flag? I think he's right there. You can see him. <laughs> so, what does the banner do? Uh, it gives you uh, bonuses to your combat resolution as they just all your warriors can kind of see it wiggling back and forth, and they love that. Yeah. I love that so much. So every time you go into combat, you just add one to your combat resolution score. However, Banner's got a downside that if you lose that combat and your <laughs> unit unfortunately runs and flees and gets run down by the enemy, we take your Banner as a trophy and it gives me additional victory points. But the same is true for my Banners to you. So it's like, it's a trophy of war on the battlefield. You want to take the enemy standards because they mean so much. Ooh, yes, okay. Marauders, tell me about these guys. Well, we're kind of going through the reverse evolution of Pokemon here as we go from Demon Prince to Exalted Hero to Warrior Chaos to Marauder. This is what they start as, right? Okay. So yep. uh, the Warrior Chaos is just a slightly more accomplished Marauder. These guys are the first, one of the first steps down the path of glory. They're equipped with flails. They have no armor because obviously they don't care that because they do 500 push-ups a day. That is their armor. Nice. Uh, they got full command flails. There's 24 of them. It's all points related, really. Uh, it's just a good, solid unit to have. And they're marked by Corn. So they're frenzied. They're frenzied, yes, that's uh, real nasty on flails. I should note there is a banner of Endless Rage on the Warriors of Corn earlier, but... Uh, that sounds awesome. It just means they can never lose their frenzy. Okay. If you lose combat, you lose frenzy. You kind of like collect yourself and realize you're in a pretty bad situation, but that banner is like, no, they're no. always they're always they're frenzied. Always frenzied. Oh, yeah, it's always frenzied, yeah. Dragon Ogres. Now, these guys, what's special about them? Let me tell you, your guess is as good as mine on these guys. <laughs> uh, they are an anomaly to me. They exist in the frozen northern wastes, uh, in the mountains. It's like a whole thing. They, they just, they're like children. Of, I don't even know if they're children of chaos, really. They just like to follow the warriors of chaos around in their, their pillaging and their rampaging. Uh, they're like monstrous cavalry. They got a lot of impact as they go in. They got a lot of fighting potential, but... They do need support from the rest of your army. They can't just like recklessly go in. They're all equipped with double hand weapons. Nice. And would you believe their champion is called the Shark Shartak? I don't know what that is, but that's what he's called. All right, if you know what it is. Like Shark Attack, but without the K. Yeah, okay, yeah. so it's Shark Shartak. 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 Shartak, yep. Yeah, there's gotta be some sort of inside reference for that. I gave him heavy armor too, because it looks like they got it, so. It, They're it's thick. So, it does. And for a giant, which obviously is my first time fielding a giant, so. Tell me about the Giants, Luca. Uh, well, they are an unfortunate story. If you go far enough back into the history, they used to be grand. They used to make grand inventions, lived in the clouds and the mountain peaks and everything. They had a great culture, not uh, not so much anymore. Now they're that. Uh, he <laughs> is, the Chaos Giants are the coolest though because they can take chaotic mutations. So he's got like a callous tie, so he counts as having heavy armor. Uh, and they regenerate their wounds because of the influence of chaos, so he's got six of regeneration. Nice. He's more expensive, though, than regular giants. As he should be. Naturally. And on your side, what you got here? Uh, we got a bunch of green idiots, uh, and they're happy, with, they're happy with it. These are the Night Goblins, part of the Orcs and Goblins list, if you are new to the old world. They're my favorite way to play the Orcs and Goblins. They're very unreliable. They're dead tricky. They want to rely on magic and cloak and dagger and just 
they don't want they don't want to do a fair fight they're they're not about fair fights here not not a single one of them i can't even under literally no model here in this list is looking for a fair fight <laughs> Who you got leading your army? Well, that there is a Night Goblin Odd Knob. He is a level four wizard. These guys love their wizards, and the wizards love them. He is going to have Buzz Gob's Knobbly Staff. He's got a fancy ruby ring of ruin. Nice. Uh, that's it for him. Moving on, we have a Night Goblin War Boss on a giant cave squig, who is easily my favorite model in all of the old world right now, only because he's... He's hard to predict what he's uh, capable of doing, uh, but I, I kitted him out. He's got the uh, Wallopa's one-hit Wanda spear there. <laughs> he's got himself a Talisman of Protection. Give him a five-up board save. He's got the Ed Button hat. You can see it on him. He's got the little Viking horns and everything. Yeah. He also has troll pants on. What? Yes, I know. It, it, it sounds ridiculous. He has all of these things. So he's got a pair of troll pants, a Talisman, Ed Button hat. He's got Wallopa's one hit wonder, and he's got a case quick that has random movement. I got, I got to know. What do the troll pants do? What are the, what are they? Do? Uh, they give him regeneration like a troll does. So they help him regenerate his wounds, and it gives him plus one to his armor save because they're thick. Yeah. Oh, dude. Okay. All right. And beside him, we got a couple of Night Goblin big bosses. They're like the lower tier of Goblin. Uh, one of them is uh, got two flags on a stick. That's our battle standard bearer. And then beside him is just another Goblin big boss. They're just cheap and kind of cool to have in units. They help the leadership out a little bit. Uh, Both of those guys are going to have great weapons. Ooh, great weapons. And for your core... We got two bricks of 30 Night Goblins. Both of them still need to be rebased, but luckily we got the Forge movement trays here to make it work. Absolutely. They all have thrusting spears, shields, light armor, and full command in the form of a banner, musician, and a champion. And they're all equipped with nets. So when they get into combat, they just try and throw nets on the enemy. Nets? It's not, it, it reduces your strength as you're trying to like wrestle your way out of the net. But however, naturally the net could backfire and they just end up throwing it on themselves instead <laughs> in, in pure Goblin fashion. And they all are hiding fanatics in them. This yellow unit is gonna have two, and the uh, black unit is gonna have three. Fanatics. Very unpredictable, and they're gonna do the most damage on the table, guaranteed. Okay, and for the next one? We got 15 cave squigs with uh, three goblin handlers in the back. Their goal, they rush right forward towards the enemy and cause as much damage as they can before they die. They have a rule that when they break and run away from combat, squigs obviously aren't an organized military unit. They just run in every direction and attack things when they break. So eh, try and do as much damage with them as I can before they die. And what are these massive squigs? They are called mangler squigs. It's a single choice. They come in pairs, but that doesn't mechanically do anything. They're just a very dynamic model. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites too. Again, random movement, trying to do as much damage as I can before it dies is the theme there. And of course, I got a couple of spear throwers over here, uh, little bolt throwers for the goblins. Technically not night goblins, but they're good to have like artillery support to force the enemy to come towards me. Part of my tricks, obviously. Mm -hmm. And we got a giant of our own, though he's not as cool as the chaos giant because he doesn't get to take any upgrades. He's just a giant. But he rolls on the same chart, and he can also stuff things in his pants like yours can. I would like, <laughs> which I didn't tell Dave about until then. <laughs> no, you're right. What does that even mean? So they have two options when they attack. They either put things in their pants, or they do a rant, or they belly flop on them, or hit them with their club. Giants are beautiful. What is what? What happens when they put things in their pants? We don't talk about what happens to them. Okay, okay they are fair. simply removed from play. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Luca, guess what? Yes, what? This battle report is sponsored by Whaling Games. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about Whaling Games. Why should I order from Whaling Games? Three reasons. One, worldwide shipping. Okay. Two, competitive pricing. And three, massive stock quantities. Including the old world? Including the old world. Okay, well, that's convenient for me in Canada. I'll say that. And I definitely need more Night Goblins. And it's kind of hard to get your hands on old world stuff because it is a hot commodity right now. Mm-hmm. So you would get more goblins? Is that what you would get? I'd probably go more goblins. Uh, the more the merrier. Okay. Yeah. So that what would you get? I'd go just for more straight up night goblins here. Uh, there's the one character I kind of want as well. It's one of the new shaman models they came back out with again. So I'd probably go for that. Nice. Well, you can order. Uh, you actually specifically could order too. Yeah. There's a link in the description. Uh, you and anyone else watching this right now. Yeah, you could order from direct from Wayland. And thank you again, Wayland Games, for sponsoring this. And we look forward to more games. Many more games. We're doing pitch battle today. We're going to keep it simple. This is Dave's second game of the old world, so we're not going to go too far into the other match play missions. Not yet. 
Uh, so with pitch battle, we're going to have a uh, Dawn of War style deployment as we deploy across from one another. It's going to be 12 inches up of deployment. And Dave did the same. We rolled off. Dave obviously going to be on that side. I'll be on this side. Going on mine, I got Mangler Squigs and a Giant to match up against Dave's Giant. We, I won a Giant fight, and I assume Dave does too. Yes. Uh, we got Night Goblins, and inside of this, we're going to have our Battle Standard Bear and nothing else across from Dave's Warriors of Chaos with a Mark of Corn with the Exalted Hero also inside of it. Moving along, I got a Bolt Thrower with my Odd Knob Shaman across from that nasty, nefarious Demon Prince and the Chaos Marauders. We got more Night Goblins here. Uh, this one is gonna have my generic big boss in it who's just gonna have a great weapon. And then we got Cave Squigs who are gonna rush up the board. One more Bolt Thrower, and then my Night Goblin War Boss on his Cave Squig. And then the last element for Dave's list will be those Dragon Ogres hanging out behind a fence. I figured it'd be fun if I let Dave pick my spells for me here. I haven't picked them yet. I am a level 4 wizard, and I'm obviously going to go with the uh, Wall Magic lore here. So I'm just going to shovel this up. I don't have the signature in here, so it's one of these six coins. Pick four of these six cards. One, two, three, four. Thank you very much. Evil sun shining. What, what's this all about? What, what's happening here? Well, that one there is uh, just bolsters my guys. The, the evil sun is literally rising up from the horizon, and my guys perform better in combat because of it. it increases like AP of my guys nearby. They get to reroll. I think it rolls a one. Things like that. Uh, goblins don't care about that one as much. I mean, that's more of an orc spell. Okay. Foot of Gork or Mork. There's a massive green foot on the battlefield, and it seems to be moving. It literally, just a giant foot comes out of the clouds. Okay, cool. And does a lot of damage, obviously. Stomps around the battlefield. The stomp on you, too? Oh, yeah. Okay, I, I accept. <laughs> Vindictive glare. Their brows furrowed and their teeth clenched. The shaman's glare is so intense that their enemies visibly wither. I stare at you until you die. <laughs> it's quite good at killing monsters in the Demon Prince, so that, that one's going to be my like my little ace in the pocket to, to kill the Demon Prince. Man, all this magic is like, uh, it just, it's, uh, it's uh, I'm, I'm corning brain right now. It's just, it's all feels like Eldar trickery. Like that's, that's what it all feels that's like. That's exactly how these guys want to play. In Bad Moon Rising, the shaman summons a great pale moon above the battlefield, trembling under its baleful gaze. The enemy can barely lift their weapons. Okay, that, that's uh, uh, just like big moon distraction. Yeah, like, exactly yeah. that. I bring you down to my level. Your weapon skill four in your guys, I'm weapon skill two. Why don't we both be weapon skill two? <laughs> That, wow, actually seems pretty powerful. It is, well, magic is quite strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I'm not really gonna get much use out of the Evil Sun Shining, so I'm gonna ditch that for the signature spell. I believe it's called the Laura Mork. That's the goblin one for itchy nuisance. The goblin just kind of literally itches himself and laughs and cackles maniacally until you do the same thing. You start feeling warm, sweaty, and uncomfortable for whatever reason. It reduces your toughness and your initiative by D3. Dang. It's all about like reducing your stats to my level, so we're fighting on evil ter uh, equal terms. When I'm playing like four or five points a model and you're not, yeah. <laughs> so my, this dude here, he can actually uh, make it a little harder for you to cast spells. That guy and the exalted hero with the chaos warriors are going to be a little bit harder to target with those spells. Okay. Makes it easier for you to unbind the magic as well. Ah, all right. Time to roll off. I get plus one to roll and uh, I have to go first. If I win, I get plus one because I finished deploying first. Yep. Okay. Let's roll. I'm, I'm black dice. You're yellow dice. Right. Turn right. one goblins. Uh, with my spells, my strategy phase and everything, I don't actually have anything to do. Uh, all the hexes I have, and I only have hexes, uh, will target day, but they're 15 inch range, so I gotta wait till turn two or three, maybe probably three realistically. Uh, so otherwise I'm going to go right to movement. There will be no charges, but I do have random movement to resolve. We're gonna start with the Mangler Squigs. Random movement is gonna be a 3d6 move. Missed the box. 10. Might as well roll the Goblin War Boss here on his giant cave squig as well, just to get them both out of the way. He's gonna go 11. All right, same thing. Gonna go ahead and do the squig moves. This guy actually moved 10, not 11, but he's gonna go right towards you. Uh, and all his fun random movement stuff. We're gonna move on to the giant cave squig over here who did go 11. He's gonna be nice and easy. We're gonna wheel him one entire inch and we are gonna send her uh, the other 10 forward. So we might as well go right on up. And then the only other units that are gonna, look how re reckless that is. The only other movements that are gonna uh, units that are gonna move is this giant's gonna march. He is gonna go about eight. Or oh, the I knew the club was gonna be a problem. Eight there, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and stick him on this side. He's gonna end up generally around there with a full march. The last thing to move will be these cave squigs. They're full send. They full move uh, eight on a march, so we are gonna take that and we are gonna roll with it. 
because uh, that's their only job. I don't love him there, but that's what's up. I like him there. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized I blocked my own bolt thrower shop. That's cool. That's goblin stuff. That's it. It's all part of the course. Exactly. And that is it for movement. I'm a liar. I'm going to move the night goblin just a little bit after realizing I kind of want to put my shaman up. So not, not done the movement yet. Not quite. No, okay. we're going to move them up just a wee bit. Just a regular move. No need to really march. I'm going to have these goblins kind of cover this like little pass between the trees here. They might be marching. They might not be marching, but... And look at that. Who would have thought the flag would have fallen over? Double banner is like is amazing. Look at it. <laughs> no, no kidding. And then the uh, I'll fix them up in a second. The shaman is gonna move four because if I want to shoot my missiles, I can't march. And that that is it for movement. Locked in. 100. Starting this shooting phase off with our night goblin shaman. He is gonna channel his ruby ring of ruin into a fireball into the marauders because they got no armor and uh, they're in range. Now, I need to show a six on the dice because it it's a bound item. It gives me power level two. Uh, this is the only spell I can cast this turn. So if I do succeed, you might as well fade to dispel it. That's like your once per turn dispel because you don't have any wizards. No, unfortunately. Let's go. We need a six on the dice. Hey, uh, we got an eight. What'd you get? I got a seven. Uh, not quite enough. So the ruby ring is going to work. It's going to be 2d6 hits at strength four. Uh, we got six. Not great. Uh, these are strength four against your toughness of three. So these are going to wound you on threes. Because you got no armor, you're naked. Every three is a dead guy. Ah! That fireball goes right in the center of them and kills five. Dang. And that's five dead dudes. Oh, man. And you know what? They got the mark of corn. They don't care about their buddies dying. The next and final thing of my turn is this bolt thrower is going to shoot at the marauders right across the table and try and pierce through their ranks. Now, I need a five to hit because of range. And uh, if I hit, there's a lot to explain. If not, oh, Ooh. I hit. So what is that? What's happening here? Uh, both throwers have a rule called uh, through and through. I'm going to get one hit on the unit for every rank that I pierce through, including the incomplete bank rank there. So it'll be four hits here. Oh, dang. Now with through and through, it starts as rank six, like a normal both thrower. And for every rank it pierces through, it loses a strength. So it'll go five, four, and three in this case. And you don't count the last one, even though it's incomplete? I count that. I do, that's that fourth one there, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. First one I need is a two for a dead guy. Second one I need a two for a dead guy. Third one, it's now strength four, I need a three. And then the last one I need a four. That is a dang, perfect shot. Dang, that, dang. That pierced through four marauders. Wow. That's four dead. Man, Luca. And again, they don't care about that panic. It's all I can conjure on turn one. More to come later though. Okay. That's it, just the, these are warning shots. Yeah. Oh, this guy. Is that a warning shot? That was a, war that was a really, 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 really well aimed warning <laughs> shot. <laughs> <laughs> you took out nine dudes. Hey, you only just need a couple to do wreak havoc with them. Okay, all right. So I am to understand that there is a gaze of the gods, and I want them to notice me right now. It's optional, but I always prefer to go on the table myself. I, yeah, it's my preference, yeah. too. I don't see it as optional. I see it as a must for every game. And I'll start with uh, Demon Prince, because he's the general. Yeah, why not? He's already he's already uh, hit Dark Apotheosis, so he's going to gain uh, other benefits. Other, perhaps, perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps. All right. Let's see what the result is. I get a five. Ah, uh, that is Dark Fury. That is awesome. So that's a permanent, they love you. They love him. And that's plus one attack on him forever. He already has a demonic gift from previous battles called they gifted him an extra arm. I mentioned that. I didn't actually mention that earlier, I think. So he has an extra arm with an extra weapon on it. It's not modeled, but he also has a, an attack from that. So now he has plus two attacks on his profile, mm -hmm. which is seven. Yeah. And he's got frenzy. So he's got eight attacks. Eight. Nice. And I will attempt another gaze from the gods for my exalted hero as well. Tempted by the first one, are you? Oh, very much indeed. Yeah. Just don't roll a one. It's okay. Good. All right, let's see. They're going to roll here. Let's see what we get. Oh, five again. Same thing. Dark Fury. Plus one attack permanently. Fantastic. They kind of, like, as the game progresses, they get progressively stronger as they get into battle. I love that. Before they get into battle, yeah. This is like even before we're even fighting. You, you do it every turn. It's free. Okay. Done. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of stats. I'm anticipating, because I'm optimistic, yeah. we're going to add more attacks and add more buffs. Yeah. And we have this in the forge. We make tokens. And we're going to, this is a generic token, but we're going to make it a plus one attack. That's what yep. that means in this game. So my demon prince has one, and I got another one for my exalted hero. And they are available on the forge. And if you are a silver vault member, you get 20% off all items on the forge. That includes like the bases themselves as well. These move and trade converters and all of that stuff. So. 
That's what we're using in this game to represent that. Going into the movement phase, already pre-measured, nothing is in range for charging, unfortunately, because that's what we want. I wanted. assume you'd like to, yeah. So we're just gonna march everything forward and corn it forward. That's kind of forced my hand, eh? Absolutely, starting with the giant right here. So I'm going to um, wheel an inch Oop. and then go 11 inches. Well, that's my range, but I'm gonna stay outside of nine from your giant, because I don't want your your, your double squig. The manglers. The manglers, I don't want them to get me, so I think that'd be silliness. So, so you're just, saying you want an honest giant fight? Honest giant fight, okay? I want my, I want to fight my cousin here, uh, and that's all I want. Chaos Warriors now, I'm gonna wheel, go an inch, and then they get another seven they could go. So with our handy dandy measurements from the forge once again, we get an extra inch here. Mark. Dragon Ogres now. So I'm going to wheel three inches, go there, and then they got the rest of their nine because they moved 12. It's minus one because of this fence, and that's all pre-measured. So... You just pick them up and put them over there, yeah. yeah <laughs> it's, it's way easier like with them to do it that way. There we go, moving forward. Now for the Marauders, Oop. just going to move forward. They end up there, right beside the Dragon Ogres. Now for my general Demon Prince, who's got the plus one attack, he's going to march over here. We're already pre-measured this. Right in front of your, your squig, dude, with all his war gear, man. Boo. Whatever, he's got Wall of his one-hit wonder. You're about to experience it. Bring it. Finish my movement. No shooting whatsoever. And that's the end of the turn. That's essentially, that's like round one done. Yeah. Round one done. Just getting, we showed up to the dance. Five to go. Time to waltz. <laughs> turn two. Uh, my strategy phase, nothing crazy to do, but I do have a couple spells to cast with my shaman. Uh, they're both hexes. One's Itchy Nuisance and one is Bad Moon Rising. The only enemy unit in range are those poor marauders who I'm going to keep harassing. We'll start the show off with Bad Moon Rising. Uh, this is a 10 to cast, so I need to show a six on the dice. I'm a level four wizard. Uh, I got an eight. eight on the dice. Luca, I'm not going to bother trying to stop that. Not a big deal. Uh, next spell is Itchy Nuisance. Scratchy Itchy. We're talking to those same marauders. Uh, this one's cast on a nine, so I got to show a five on the dice here. Yeah. Uh, that is an exceptionally good roll as well. Wow. Once again, I'm just going to wait until you're shooting spells before yeah. I try to uh, I dispel it. That's a good call. Now, I actually forgot to roll the D3 on both those spells. Uh, Itchy Nuisance reduces the toughness by D3, and then Bad Moon Rising reduces your weapon skill in this show. So I'll do Itchy Nuisance first. So you're going to be two toughness lower. So only toughness one now. Dang. Very, very easy to hurt. Uh -huh. Let's see how bad you are with your weapons with the Bad Moon. Just one. So your weapon skill from four to three, and your initiative's from three to two now. You're just, you're, you're a goblin now. Ah. All right, Luca, we're gonna mark their uh, debuff. So we'll just put it beside and- It actually fits in the trace. It's uh, conveniently without- <gasps> Oh, it's so satisfying. That wasn't planned oh. that way. It's just a happy convenience. Hey, yes. That's the strategy phase. I got nothing to rally. We're gonna go right to the movement phase and charges to declare. Now I gotta declare all my charges, uh, kind of one at a time before Dave has a chance to react, but I assume we're gonna know what those reactions are gonna be. First of all, my giant into Dave's giant. My second and only other charge will be the cave squigs into the dragon ogres. Uh, now you can choose to flee with either one of them or hold. Hold. I wonder if the giant technically probably has to hold, but yeah, you're gonna hold either way. They're gonna hold, <laughs> no fleeing. Now, Dave put his giant uh, more than nine inches away from mine, so I'm gonna need to show a four on one of these two dice. <laughs> I rolled a two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah you, you missed, right? Uh, this is, I, it's uh, fine, you get to charge uh, me on your turn. We're getting the same result in the, the end same here. Thing. Two giant fight. But it just means you get to hit me first. <laughs> is there any benefit to that? Me hitting you first? You you might just, you might just, is there a, one of them called thump with club, you might just cave my skull and I'm dead. <laughs> okay, that's that. I wanted to do that to you. Now he still does move the two inches towards his cousin. Boom, that's it. Look <laughs> at that. They're doing a little dance. It's up to each other. Thank you, it makes my charge a little easier. And the warriors too. <laughs> Uh, next charge, these squigs are going to go for those dragon ogres. Uh, they need a, an eight inch charge, so they got to show a four on one of the dice because they move four. Maybe I get a little bit luckier. Give me a four up on one. Hey, we got Ooh. six. They're very in. All right, well, here we go. The bloop. And we go straight. Bloop. And we bloop. And bloop. Lots of blooping. Before I get to go to my remaining moves, I do have to resolve the random movements. We're going to start with our night goblin war boss and his case quig. He gets to go 3d6 inches! Oh! <laughs> uh, so does he reach 
my general. I don't think he gets anything done there. Oh man! Look at that. Like that's it. That's him going straight. So he's gonna have to. Oh man. Uh. So he could choose to panic and leave. He could like wheel this way and go that way. But I don't know. I'm gonna. I honestly, I'm just gonna commit. I needed one more inch. <laughs> so we're gonna go one or like half ish and then we're gonna go five and a half forward and just end up right there very sad oh wow that, oh that's the name of the game that's it well i got another opportunity with my mangler squigs if they roll high enough they could go fight the giant e we probably want like a 14 or 15. Uh, i don't think 11 is gonna 11. do it 11. well i'm not this is the 11 so i'm not gonna quite make it with that who sads in one go we're gonna move 10 and wheel one then. Okay, yeah, that is a little sad, isn't it? Yeah, and I wanted you in combat too. You know what? You get more than enough opportunity to do that. Hmm. Luca, something I really like about the old world is that you still need to move forward even though you failed charge. Like, that's just so cool. Like, Surging forward? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They actually incorporated that in the Horus Heresy, which I was uh, really happy with too. Just always, always gaining ground. Yeah. Uh, the rest of my remaining moves, we're going to keep our Night Goblin mob still, because I kind of like where they are for now. I'm going to see where the dust settles before I commit them to the battlefield like a good Night Goblin commander. Uh -huh. The only thing I will move is my general Night Goblin is going to shift up over to here just to get within 21 inches of that Chaos Giant that I didn't get in combat with. I'm going to stare at him ominously. That's going to bring us to the shooting phase. I got more things to do now. Yes. My little happy goblin shaman is going to start dancing back and forth on his feet with a vindictive glare towards our little chaos giant friend right over there. Uh, mostly because he's not in combat and I'd like to do some damage to him, but he's also probably the best target for the spell. This is cast on an eight. I got to show a four on the dice. Hopefully not a double one. Uh, you know what? That's good enough. Now, Luca, as far as I understand, I need to roll an 11 or more to kind of ward off the magic attack from this giant, which, uh, you know what? No, because I know you have more. Yeah. And you're going to be attacking by marauders. I'm going to just bank on that. Yeah, I mean, he's probably maybe thick enough. He doesn't care about this that much. Exactly. It's a strength seven hit, so I need a three to wound because you're toughness six. Hey, it works. Ooh. Okay, but you do have a regeneration, regeneration. upgrade. Yep. Yes. So you just quickly heal the wound on a six up. On a six up. Oh. Not quite. Now, it is a very powerful stair. It does D3 damage. One! One. <laughs> I, think got, I think you got five left. I think, yeah. I'm going to go to my Bolt Aurors next before I do the Ruby Ring of Ruin. This Bolt Aurors is going to do a piercing shot through and through against those same Chaos Mirage with the Mark of Corn. Uh, mostly because that's the only target I have line of sight to that I really want to fire at because my Goblin's in the way. Makes sense. Uh, we're in close range. We're in half range. So I actually hit on four with this Goblin Bolt Aurors. And we, it's a wide shot. We missed. That's it. Done. Done. Boltor number two is going to take a shot directly in front of him, right into your demon prince that flew right into his path. Now, unfortunately, my war boss is an idiot and blocked the path. So you are going to have hard cover here. <laughs> awesome. Uh, because of hard cover and we're in short range, I need a six to hit with this Boltor. It'd be a pretty clutch hit, though. Uh, oh. Okay, also a wide shot. Yes. Natural, too. Yes. Yeah. Last thing to do in the shooting phase is my Ruby Ring of Rune. He's going to point his fist towards those marauders and boo, a fireball at them because they're quite scary and I want to thin their numbers out more still. Need a six on the dice still, plus two with bound item. Oh. Don't even get it. You know what? You didn't even use your dispel. Not even, ah. The one wound, whatever. Uh, combat phase. We only have this one between the cave squigs and the dragon ogres. Cave squigs definitely going to go first. I just got to look at their stats. I got 10 squig attacks from the five in the front. They got two attacks each. Uh, they are weapon skill four, so I'm going to need fours to hit. Let's go, little guys. Oh. Oh, that's not too bad. That's about half, a little bit above half. And now I'm strength five, your toughest four. I need threes here to wound. Okay, there's only two, well, three wounds. Now these are minus one. And the six is armor bane, so it's gonna be minus two. You have armored hide two, which gives you a five up save. You have heavy armor, which is, sorry. You have heavy armor, which is a five up save. And armored hide two adds two to that. Adds two, so I'm three up. Yep, but minus one on two of them and minus two on one of them. <laughs> So you have, you have two four-ups and one five-up. Okay, simple as that. Here's the two four-ups. Good one. start. Good okay. start. And here's the five-up. Yeah. Okay. All right. You, I think you have four wounds each. We'll have to double-check that. Two wounds. Let's put it on this dude on the side there. I, uh, I effectively did nothing. Your turn. Now it's time for me to hit back. You got a lot of attacks. They have uh, four attacks each because of the double hand weapon. Yeah, uh, And then right. the shark attack has like an extra one. So he's I think 13 attacks 13. in total. And you're hitting me on fours. <laughs> That's not, that's not bad, I think. That, yeah, that's pretty good. 
And then your strength five on Dragon Ogre. So you're actually looking for twos to wound my toughness three. And would you believe squigs don't have a save? Okay, well, that's six dead squigs, man. Hate that. Goodbye, my squiggly friends. There goes six of them. Four, five, six. And there's one more thing to resolve. The Dragon Ogres have stomp attacks. Yes, they do. Now resolving the stomp attacks, which is the lowest initiative. And they got two each. Yep. And it's twos to just flat out kill. Yeah, strength five against my toughest three. I don't have an armor save, so. All right. Every two just says dead squig. It's a sad day for a squig. Ah. That's, that's, that's six. That's six. There's another six. Oh, I need you to kill not six, yeah, man. That's, that's, uh, why? What's the significance of that? Why? I needed five left when they break. When they, they have to have at least five models when they break to actually do the break thing. Right. So the goal is when they break, they do damage to everything nearby. Demon Prince, Dragon Ogres, Marauders. My guy. Wow. But That's actually kind of cool. He's going to kill six of them. But it's just six to four. I was kind of banking on killing one of the dragon ogres there uh -huh. uh, to make it, you have less attacks and less stomps back at me. But we didn't quite get there. That's that okay. Made, that would have made a massive difference. Oh, yeah. It's four less attacks, two less stomps. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we go to a break check now. Now for the break test. We're going to break this down so it's digestible. All right, what do we do? How do where do we start? Oh, easiest way to start is with the wounds caused. You caused five, 10, 12 wounds on me. And there are other bonuses to take into account is your unit has the, in a formation called closed order. So if you're in a combat with a closed order formation, it's a combat formation, you always get a bonus there. The other bonuses you might claim would be banners and ranks. Your dragon orcs don't have that. They're just, they just hit really hard and they rely on close combat prowess to just get combat resolution. Yeah. Now we look at mine. My squigs don't get a closed order formation. They get open order formation, so I don't get the extra combat resolution. But the only thing I did do was I caused two wounds. So yes. I'll take two out of it. The difference is 11. Wow. So the difference is 11. My goblin leadership, I believe, is four. Maybe five if I'm lucky, but I think it's four. I'm not even going to bother looking up because I know how this is going to go. There's an 11 disparity. Right? Correct. Okay. So I'm going to roll 2d6. I'm going to add 11 to my roll. And I'm looking for a four. Uh... <laughs> Let's see. So I roll a seven. seven, so I roll an 18. 18. That is not four. No. Uh, we are gonna break. The other options would have been, the only option would have been if I rolled a double one that always succeeds. Okay, all right. I did not get that. No. So squigs are gonna break from combat and when they break, they're gonna roll a 2d6 and run away because they don't have a big unit size. Now, I do have to double check one thing. Now, normally, a unit would break and run directly away from the center of the enemy unit that, you know, caused that in the combat there in a one-on-one -on -one situation. However, squigs have a rule called squigs gone wild. Uh, they don't break, they actually just scatter in every direction, and they would cause damage to all units, friend and foe, within 2d6 inch range as they scatter. It's quite a vast area of effect. Yeah. But they need to actually have at least five squigs to do any damage. So they scatter in all directions. You know what? For dramatic effect, they all run uh, 10, 10 inches, inches. 10 oh. inches and everywhere, but they don't do any damage. Okay. Because there's not enough squigs to actually do the damage. So uh, that will be it for this combat. Now you have a couple options ahead of you. Those are going to be to overrun directly ahead or restrain your dragon ogres and reform them in any direction. There's no decision in my mind that I need to. I'm just the, the one just sounds clear. Just going to overrun, right? That's oh. a very corn thing to do. It's not great for me. Bring it on. I was hoping to kill two dragon ogres with that squig squigs on wild. And that's 2d6 forward. That's six inches forward. You do the full move. Yep. And moving six inches up just forward. Hello, my scaly friends. Glad to see you here. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> now, I should point out for keen eyes, those squigs that died were within six of this night goblin war boss. The ca giant cave squig is actually mean to psychology, so he doesn't care about panicking. Normally, he would like panic and be like, I'm out of here. I'd have to do a leadership check and he's out of here. That guy's like leadership six or yeah. seven, so. 50-50-ish yeah. that he's uh, sticking around or not. I also really would have liked him. He was one inch off of helping with that combat and he's quite good. So him and the squigs rolling a little bit better, got a different outcome here. <laughs> but that's the beauty of the old world. Mm. It's my turn too now, starting with the strategy phase, gaze of the gods. You didn't see it coming. Both my, <laughs> both my characters. Well, who's gonna do first? Let's do the demon prince. Dark fury, dark fury, dark fury. I don't want a one. You don't want a one, you want anything don't else. Want. I got a six, I got a six. Okay, that's dark vitality. Well, it's dark apotheosis, dark vitality. His leadership is increased by one, and so is his strength. The strength's a little redundant because you're already really strong, but it's nice to have. The yeah. leadership is more important than most people think. Because that's his, he's got a rule called inspiring presence, which that leadership affects everything within 12 inches of him. So they technically have one more leadership now too, as long as he sticks around. Dark apotheosis, 
So we got uh, plus one leadership and strength. We have a nice little token to remind us of that as well from the forge. He's gonna have a nice little collection at the end of this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna here. Let's stack them up on the on the base there. There we go. And now off to the other one. Let's see if the gaze of the gods are on my exalted hero. Only good things. Only good things. Only good things. Only good. Ah, uh, the box. Uh, four, four. Ah, uh, four is he actually spawns a little weird tentacle. <laughs> like anywhere, like out of his armor, maybe out of his neck or something. His weapon skills increased by one. Definitely out of his neck. Uh, which is really good for him. He goes from weapon skill six to seven, which means all my guys, well, I guess my guys were already hitting him on fives. You know what? He's just better at what he's doing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't actually matter. Yeah. Uh, it might. So I don't think it matters. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. You don't even have to mark that one. All right. One thing I did forget to do is because you were so gracious to run right in front of me and uh, it's kind of making me panic a little bit, I am going to release this unit's uh, fanatics uh, in your turn here, or at the start of your turn, essentially. before Technically before the Gaze of the Gods, but it doesn't change too much. So they go right about here. They, they literally hop out of the unit within three inches. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and screen ourselves against your charge. What? You'll take some hits. And then they're gonna go uh, all over the place. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be. You're, you're gonna love it. I'm gonna love it. Everyone's gonna love it. Now on to the movement phase, declaring my charges and what's marching. I suppose uh, majority of my army is going to be charged. I, well, actually, yeah. The nice thing is we're all frenzy and everything too, so you gotta have to. Uh, this is an obvious one with the demon prince right there. Yeah. Uh, with my uh, dragon. Ogres, uh, you know what? I'll take the bait. Uh, it's bold. Yeah, I'm gonna run right in. I could roll really low. It, yeah, or could it be devastating? But either way, it's gonna be fun. The dragon ogres technically already got their points back by killing the squig herd rather well, so you can throw them away and do as much damage as you want with them at this point. My marauders back here, they're just gonna march forward because they're too far away to do anything. Yep. Over here on this side with the chaos warriors, they're gonna charge the giant. I love it. And my giant is gonna charge the mangler squigs. The mangler yep. squigs. Uh, I don't really have many options here when it comes to reacting. Uh, we've got immune to psychology, uh, so we don't care about the fear, so we're going to have to hold. The mangler squigs are going to have to hold, and of course the giant's going to hold. So bring it on. Holes. Yeah, bring oh, it on. Bring it on. I'm going to start with my giant. Now, he's within his movement characteristics, therefore I'm just going to wheel him and move him forward. Just send him in. Boom. For my chaos warriors, I'm going to charge a giant. we pre-measured. I need three on the... Either one. Either yeah. one. So let's see. I get a five. Good enough. Perfect. So we're good. Boop. So we're going to wheel like a little bit, just to... Yeah, essentially you go right, right forward into them. Uh, uh, Sometimes it's hard to grab the trays on. Here they are, ready to battle. Got to move over to the other side first to see my demon prince charging. He's gonna scooch him on up. He's got a nine-inch move, so he's well within even his movement characteristic. Dragon ogres. I'm gonna roll for their charge so I can see how much wheel I get. So I get a six. Oh yeah, that's max. Yeah, so we're we're going like this, and we're well within. Boom. Now, as they're charging through the fanatics, they do have to get hit by the fanatics on the way. And so technically, to hit this guy first, I'm going to retroactively move this guy over here in hindsight, realizing that this dragon ogre very likely will die and never hit that fanatic. And as the fanatics are hit and moved through, the fanatics will eventually end up popping through the shortest distance. This guy's going to end up somewhere generally around there. And then we're just going to roll them all at the same time quickly. This guy's going to end up probably on the other side. Not quite there. He'll be directly behind the dragon ogres. And this guy would be somewhere over there. But we're going to move the, do the damage to the Dragon Ogres, put their final position, then I'll put the Fanatics where they would properly go. It's going to go ahead and roll them all up. It's 3d6 hits. Could be low, could be high. It's 12. Wow. So it's a little above average. Uh huh. These are strength 5. These are 3s to wound. And you will get a save against them, but a 6 up, because these are AP minus 3. Ooh. Okay, it's 8 saves. We're looking for 6s, getting only 1. 7 go through. 7, all right. So 2 wounds left on this. So he dies. A full four on this one, he dies. And then one wound off of the one in the middle. Right. Wow. And then you just kind of keep following through with the charge. You go in. Probably want to go around here to beat up my character. Yes, very much. And then these guys would essentially pop out around where his final position. It's kind of like as they move, too. It's a little ambiguous, but we'll, it'll, they're generally around there. Uh, uh, because somebody died. <laughs> I didn't expect that much, uh, that much work. Yeah, that was a, crazy. Now, before you go to remaining moves with the Marauders, the Fanatics do move in every player's compulsory move phase. Uh, the, we don't have really a control over them. Now, the turn they come out, I do pick a direction for them to go in, and then I roll 2d6, and that's where they go. If they touch something, that thing gets hit. But if I roll doubles on that 2d6, they, they get wrapped up in their own ball and chain and die. <laughs> or if they hit terrain or themselves, but I get to control how they initially come out, so those second clauses probably won't come up. Okay. We're gonna start with this fanatic here. We're gonna choose for it to go direct. You know what, let's go towards this marker here. We're gonna go and clip this corner. We're gonna try and cleave the butt of that dragon over there. 
Now, if I roll doubles, he dies. This is all going to determine how far he goes. He's going to go nine. nine. Ooh, that'll be nine inches about here. And that's going to hit the dragon ogre. And we get D6 strength five hits again. D6. It's going to be six. All right, they're kind of bloodthirsty. And these are going to be threes to wound. And that is five saves oh. at minus three. Three sixes. Five six up saves. Wow. And that's it. He, he dies to fanatics. Oh, my goodness. I know. I know. That's a dead dragon ogre. But the dragon ogres did a lot of work. They did. Also pulled out the fanatics is a big deal. I panicked and then like, go, go fanatics. <laughs> Second fanatic is going to go right towards those marauders. And we're going to go 2d6 inches. Again, doubles I die. Uh, nine. Oh. That's a spicy roll though. Oh my goodness. Nine uh -oh. should hit the unit. Yes. Uh -oh. So we'll hit the unit and pop out right beside him. We're going to go right to Mr. Redbeard there. We're going to pop it right beside him. And they're going to take D6 strength five hits. Oh, and let me tell you, they don't get a save against this. Two. All right, these, this guy's a little bit calmer. Uh, kills two of your marauders. Wow. Good thing these guys don't like run away or flee. They don't care. Yeah. They don't care. No, let, let the blood flow. 40. We got one more fancy yellow boy to go right towards that marauder on the corner. And we're going to hopefully roll really high, but not doubles. Eight. Not going to do anything with that. And boop. Hello. Hello. You may now move your marauders. <laughs> so this little marker there was measured, pre-measured, so I'll just move forward, march forward with my Marauders, and that's all I can really do. And luckily, the Fanatics weren't in the way, so they can just move straight and not have to worry about it. Now the Fanatics are random. I have no control. I have to roll scattered as where they go. Nice. Yep. And I can't charge them either, right? You just, you just you watch the havoc happen. They're like, uh, they're a, a meal to be enjoyed by both players. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more to do, so let's jump right to the fights. Simple. Giant fighting the Mangler Squig. Let's see what he gets on his giant attack table. What'd you get? I got a two. Two, you're gonna belly flop on him. So he's gonna crash down bodily upon the enemy. We're gonna put a little blast template on it. We don't need to do that so much against a single model because uh, anything underneath it takes a strength six hit with an AP of two. So you just you do one day, you just one damage. Switch. So you just go ahead and roll that wound up. Six. That'll do it. That's a wound on the squig. You, you body slam the squigs. Boom. <laughs> Uh, Mangler Squig gets to attack back. It has D6 random attacks, so I got no control over that. Three, three of them. He's web skill four. So we're gonna hit all three times with that five, five, six. And we are strength six. Your toughness six, we need fours. Oh, oh my gosh. Hey, three wounds? That ain't so bad. Now these are pretty fancy. They got minus two AP. They also have a rule called killing blow, but that won't be relevant here. That's more for like other things. Uh, so no armor for you. Mm, but I do have this, the regen. Yes, yeah, yeah, you have that chaos upgrade. Yes, you got yep. regen, six up regens. Yeah. It, not that. Okay, we do three damage to the giant. That's not bad. He is downed up two. Down to two. Ooh, okay, the manglers did way better than I thought there. However, it's not over. Now for stomp attacks, we'll just do it at the same time, yeah? Yeah, we'll just get yours out of the way first. So you minor should. D6, getting three. Okay, that's not so bad. And wounding you on threes. Yeah, I'm wounding. Two wounds. Two wounds. Uh, those are no AP, so I'm gonna get my heavy armor safe. Usually stomps on our guys have AP because they're they behemoths, but it doesn't work against other monstrous creatures. We're both like the same scale. Yeah. So I'll have heavy armor saves because I, what do I have? Cow scaly skin. How many is there, two or three? Oh, there was only two. Okay, so I passed one, fail one. That'll put me at two remaining wounds on my squigs. I got D3 stomps with my squigs, not as good as yours. Uh, it's gonna be three still, okay. <laughs> uh, I wound you on fours. Mm -hmm. two. Now, I also don't have any AP against you, so you get your heavy armor, five up save. And? Ooh, the regen, yeah. Regens, yep. <laughs> okay, one. Oh, you're, you got, you're live still. I am. With one wound. That was that was a close call, Luca. That was uh, Too close. a very surprising outcome. We have to figure out this combat resolution nonsense now. Uh, combat uh, resolution is quite simple here, actually. Uh, I did four wounds to you somehow, and you did one, two to me. So mm -hmm. the difference is two for, in my favor. I'll win by two. Luckily, giants are very strong in this edition. They're unbreakable as a special rule, which means they never break. But they do give ground. They're still pushed back because combat is a very fluid thing in this edition. So you're going to go two inches backwards, and then my manglers are going to try to restrain and reform, but I'll let everyone know their leadership four. So they're probably going to have to follow up and just kind of keep the combat going. Yeah. So we're looking for a four or less on two dice. Probably not going to happen. Uh, to no one's surprise, they are going to follow up because they were just too distracted by the combat. Yes. So if you can go ahead and just move them in for me. And that's that. 
going to move on to this fight with the Warriors of Chaos and the Exalted Hero. Now, this is my bad on me. I should have let Dave know this. It's always a good idea to put your fighting characters in the middle of units, generally in the middle of units. Uh, so you would put him, boo, 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 mock, knock him over there. Technically, we'll put him over here. And it's a little sloppy, but this is because characters can only make their full complement of attacks in the fighting rank if they're in base contact with the enemy. Uh, that would displace command models and everything as well. So they don't make way in base contact with the enemy. They only ever make way into the fighting rank. But because he's already in the fighting rank, he does not make way. So it's always a good rule of thumb to keep your character kind of central. So what you're saying is not on either end. It's one Correct. of the middle and of, you, of the flank that he's in. That's for fighting characters. Absolutely. Fighting characters, which he is. Wizards want to be on the corner because they have the chance of miscasting. And when they miscast, if they're in a unit, they do a blast around them. Right. So if they're in the corner, less your guys are going to get hit as well. Fighting characters in the middle, generally. Wizards, off to, wizards out of the units, preferably. But yeah. if they need to be in a unit, put them in a corner. All right, well, I'm not going to say no to that. Yeah, that's, that's my bad. I wasn't paying attention. So I have six attacks in total because I gain a couple bonus attacks, one from Frenzy and one from Dark Fury. Yeah, he's got four base, which is nasty on him. Uh, he, his weapon skill did go up because of the tentacle. His That's weapon right. skill seven. Yeah. I, but I forgot the Chaos Rune Sword that we gave him also gives him extra weapon skill and initiative, so it's a little redundant, but whatever. Uh, he's hitting my giant on twos because my giant not good at fighting. He's good at belly flopping. So that is five. Five hits? I think I rolled too many dice. How many did you roll? I rolled seven. Oh, just roll. Reroll. Yeah, it's all good. Okay, so I got five. Same thing, same difference. Uh, you are strength six because of the Chaos Rune Sword. Mm -hmm. Gives you plus one strength, your strength five base. Yep. I'm topping the six, so you need fours. Fours to wounds. Three wounds. Oh, awesome, great. Well, Dad's pretty fancy. Uh, he did three damage, so I have three wounds left. I got no only light armor, so no save. Now for the uh, Warriors of Chaos here, so we got the champion out front, he's got four attacks, and then these two, which have three each. That's because of the double hand weapons of the Frenzy for anyone curious. And then we have two on the side that aren't quite close enough to get all their attacks for another couple. So we have 12 attacks in total. Oh, fell out. Oh, that's not that great. The threes to hit me because I'm only web skill three. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's a bad roll. So I only got six hits. I like to stand over here because I don't know how bad or good the roll is. And I got three wounds though. Six is the wound. Six is the wound. Uh, I do get like They have no AP on their attacks uh, because they have two hand weapons. But I do get light armor. Well, luckily, that guy's got Callus tied. It's a light armor save. If I make one six up here, I live. He's oh, dead. what? Now we get to see Timber. <laughs> okay, yes, I want to see it. All right, so the way Timber works, it's a special rule that both those monsters have it too. Well, the giant makes sense, but the manglers have it. Yep. So we're both going to roll off. Yep. The winner of the roll off chooses which facing he falls in. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. Okay. So, boom. Better. You better hope you win this. <laughs> we re-roll a tie. Oh. We just re-roll a tie. Can okay, re-roll it? Re-roll it. Okay, oh, you win. Okay. So you choose, what, which of those four directions is he gonna go? <laughs> uh, that way? Just over this way. You just, it only hits things he's in base contact okay, with. Okay, so you're not direction. gonna hit it. Yeah, so yeah. like you just go bloop. Oh. You know what, the masochist Boom. in me wants me to actually fall on a unit. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a nasty hit if he falls on you. Yeah. So you don't want that, but that is the giant slain. Now, you are frenzied, so you can never test or restrain or reform. You just keep pushing the group. Forward. You're hacking his body up yep. as you're running over him. So that'll be a 2d6 overrun. Okay. Oop. All right, five inches. All right. It looks like you'll end up just hitting the trees. So I have to move forward. You're going to hit the impassable trees. Boop. Thanks to my frenzy. But because the unit was completely destroyed in combat, this kind of counts as a pursue move and catching the curs. So you do get to reform on the spot, but you have to do a leadership check. Leadership this check. frenzy does not mess with this one. I got a six. That's good enough. You're, uh, that guy should be leadership eight in the units. That's kind of you're looking for eight or less. So I want to actually go that way and face in that direction. You kind of want to get back into the battle here. Yeah, absolutely. So center access spin? Correct. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so look at something essentially like that. Yeah. Now the tree. What about the tree? Um, well, uh, usually you, 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 you're going to want to reform a little bit more. Just we'll go like that, just so that the tree won't impede your movement. Gotcha. Okay. So that way you just go straight through the tree. Or straight, like, uh, scraping the tree, you know? Tree. Now it's time for the general demon prince to attack. You squiggy. Seven attacks in total, thanks to Frenzy and having a, an extra arm. Yeah, the extra arm. Yeah. And that's only four. Oh, and you did roll uh, Dark Fury. You get one more attack. Oh. That's why there was eight attacks. I forgot. I just couldn't figure it out why. So I'm hitting you on threes here. Yes. Yeah, so that's a total of five. Wounding on twos. Oh, oh, only three. All right, well, you, yeah, because he's strength seven because of the dark apo the apotheosis upgrade being strength six base, and I'm only toughness five at best. So, three of them, you said? Three. 
Now, my guy's kind of thick. He's got light armor shield, and he's got a troll pants on, so that's a four-up save. Yeah. But he's also on an armored, uh, armored hide squig, so it's a three-up in total. Uh, you have an ensorcelled weapon, which is minus one. I got four ups. Ooh. I passed two. And then I have my troll pants. Well, oh, I have a talisman of pr uh, protection with five up board, but then my troll pants might regenerate me. Let's go troll pants. They, oh! That does count towards combat resolution, though, so I still lose. I'm down by one, but I don't take the wound. Good thing for the pants. Good thing for the pants. All right, so while it was one hit wonder, you got to use it the first round of combat. If you don't, it just doesn't work anymore for the rest of the game. Uh, it does give Mulligan Strikes first. I should have attacked with him right away, but it's a good thing he didn't die. So he's going to have four attacks into the Demon Prince at weapon skill five. So I hit on fours. But if I can get over that initial hurdle, which I did, I wound on twos at strength ten. Urgh, three wounds. For this, I am AP three on Wallopus of One Hit Wonder. Your armor does not work, but your ward save does from your Chaos Armor. So four up. Four up. All four. All oh, three. Don't, three. Yeah. don't have to go to regen. You're good. All right. Wallopus with One Hit Wonder expended. Stalemate. So we got the squig attacking his way. He's got three attacks, hitting you on fours with his massive fang-filled gob. Two. Boop, boop, two hits. He's strength five. I'm pretty sure you're toughness five. Uh, okay. So we wound once. But the scary thing here is, which I actually didn't know he had, he has a rule called killing blow. Uh oh So please roll me a four up ward save and pass it. Please. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Because that would have kill the demon prince would it yeah if you if you failed that he would have been dead oh wow. i had no idea that thing <laughs> no idea that thing had killing blow that's it that was a very very close call there uh yes act funny enough in this case you win by one because i made one regeneration save mm -hmm. and that should be it so i lost by one he's leadership six so i'm gonna add a single one to this roll and i want to roll a five or less a seven unfortunately my war boss breaks uh you have to follow because you're corn so we are gonna go, I'm gonna go 3d6 inches away and you go 2d6. Okay. I will go not very far, I'm gonna eight. go eight. Yep. And I will go seven. seven. You're off by one inch. We are running eight. We're gonna go right here and then you're gonna be just one inch behind me. Boom. <laughs> Get back here. Beautiful, that's adorable. So that's it for my turn. That's all the charges and fights. Looks like we're at the top of turn three for orcs and goblins. Yeah, madness, madness, madness. My odd knob, night goblin shaman here, is gonna cast a couple of spells, bad moon rising and itchy nuisance. Now, unfortunately, uh, good targets are not in range. The only ones in range are gonna be marauders. That's not a good target? They, it's not the optimal target. Starting with itchy nuisance. Uh, this one is cast on a nine. I need to show a five on the dice. Okay, uh, it's going to reduce their stats by D3, but these you don't care so much about, so there's no point in really stopping it. There will be two less weapon skill and initiative, or toughness is one of the two, and then I'm going to go ahead and do Bad Moon Rising. Bam! That one actually fails. Don't have to worry about that one. Easy. Hold on one second. Yeah. Why don't I care about stopping that? Uh, the You only have one dispel for the turn, and I got the magic missile and the stair attack as well. You got more to come. I got more to come. Ah, yes, yes. And see. these guys you don't really care so much about. And I only got Itchy Nuisance off, which reduces their toughness by two. So their toughness three, which didn't matter, is now down to toughness one. So it's in inconsequential. Okay, so it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah, exactly. I see. All right. I thought it was a psychological tactic. You don't care about stopping no, this. You don't, care you don't about want this to at stop all. it. <laughs> this is your least concern here on this one. It's like the vindictive glare is what you really worry about. Ah. Moving on to the rallying phase, my war boss is going to try to rally his leadership six. Come on, six. Otherwise, he's probably dead. Nope. He's uh, technically, does, does he move right now? He probably moves right now. He's got random movement 3d6, so I'm just going to go ahead and resolve that. Might as well. Wait, he go. Now, I'm not going to actually declare any charges. I don't really have any great ones, so I'm going to go right to the uh, the flea move and the, the goblins moving. Now, I've already measured out where he's going. We're going to have our war boss go eight inches because I already rolled it. It goes right through this war machine. Now, luckily, the war boss is skirmishing, so it won't cause panic in other units. Skirmishers don't cause panic when they flee through things. And then I got to resolve the fanatics. Fanatics. Uh, we're going to start with this fanatic who's nice and tight beside the marauders. I'm going to roll the scatter die first here to see where he's going uh, right through them, but he might destroy himself if I roll a double. He's going to roll a five. Nice and simple move there. We're just going to go five right through them. We're going to end up somewhere in that nice little pocket there. And they're going to take D6, strength five hits with no save. D6. It's going to be just two. Two's to kill. That kills two. Ah. Two to go. Fanatic number two. We're going to see where he's off to. Oh, he's going to hit nothing. He's going right towards my lines. Double. He's dead. He dead. Goodbye, my little friend. 
So much passion. Last, Last one. one. Where's he going? Uh, kind of sideways. Not really anything too impactful. We're going to see a nine on that roll. He's just going to have himself a good old time right about there where the die was. Oh, no. Uh, we got remaining moves left for the Night Goblin side of things here. We're going to reform both these Night Goblin mobs just to face the enemy a little bit better. Start with this lad here. Going to keep that center where it was. Again, I just removed the back one there. I just want to keep these guys in my front. I'm going to put this back. Boop. These ones are easy. We're just going to go because those Berserkers are currently in my flank. We don't like that. We're going to hang out right here instead. Keep reality in check. <laughs> we got some fanatics. And that's that. This uh, shaman here does not want to get charged by these marauders. What? I mean, how powerful are these marauders that they could actually pose a threat to your shaman? Uh, they would just one-shot him. Would they? Yeah, they. He's he has no safe. Uh, he's only got three wounds, and you wound him on threes. So, yeah, so yeah, you're sheer five. volume just, of... You, you have five. Actually, you have 12 attacks because of Frenzy. He's dead. Like Okay. Yeah. But I can finagle him to get out of their arc on a regular move. Not finagle. He's just going to move four. Mm. We're going to go ahead and move him right there, just out of their charge arc. That is a move of four, so he can still shoot this turn. That's movement finished. We're going to go right to shooting, and we're going to start with that little shaman. We're going to start with the Vindictive Glare from my shaman. He's going to fire it at the Demon Prince right over here. We're going to look for a four on the dice. However, you have the Brazen Collar, so we need a six. So that's the super high roll. The only way you can stop that is with a double six. Okay, I'm going to try to stop. Yeah, there. Go All for right. it. Boom. No. All right, so we get a scary stare. Now, this is strength seven hit, two to wound a demon prince, and no armor saves allowed, but you do have a chaos armor four board save against it. <gasps> yes. yes. Now, should note that the demon prince has a rule called warp spawn, so it wouldn't have gotten the regen, so that was very important. <laughs> yeah. Very cri critical. Next, we're going to channel up his Ruby Bring of Ruin. We're going to fire that across the table at the demon prince. I was thinking about the marauders, but they're beat up enough. And uh, I got to put a lot of pressure on this big boy here, or else I'm going to have a bad time. I need to see if I get an eight here, though, because you got that collar on still. Brazen collar! Collar uh, cool. It protects you. There you go. Here nice. Goes. No magical ring effect. A couple of uh, last elements. We've got two bolters to fire, so we're naturally going to start with the point blank shot from this bolter into the demon prince. We're going to hit on four. That thankful goblin crew and its strength. Enough to wound on a two, or that even. Ooh. So it'll go right through your armor, but you will have a four up ward save from your chaos armor. Nope. And a five up regeneration save from being a demon. Yes. Ah, no damage, no damage. No. Second bolt or the only real target they have is those marauders right in front of them. And uh, should be a pretty easy shot, but only gonna get a couple guys. Might as well bully them just a little bit more. Does it hit the little? Does it hit the, oh it does. And it pretty much kills two guys on twos. Hey, we got there. Ugh. Through and through. Only fight to do is that Mangler Squig fight with the giant. I do have one more initiative on you. You got one wound left, but I only have D6 attacks with my huge fang filled gobs. So I'm gonna have two attacks. We do have a higher weapon skill than you, which mattered for one of those attacks, and I'm strength six, so I need a four to wound. I don't oh. do it. So you know what that means? That means it's your turn, and you get to roll on the giant attack table to see what you do to my Mangler Squig. So why don't you go ahead and roll and we'll figure it out. What'd you get? Six. Oh, no idea. What we'll to look at? <laughs> All right. Well, it says here you're gonna jump up and down. You're gonna jump around, kicking and flattening the enemy for this attack. <clears throat> you don't use your club. Instead, my squig suffered D6 plus one hits as you jump up and down around them, using the strength of the giant, which is six. I don't get any armor saves. Uh, and I, that's it. So it's essentially <laughs> just, just... D6 plus one attacks. Okay. Or the hits, I should say. Okay. D6 plus one. Oh, just two then. Okay, so two hits. These are gonna wound me on. I'm toughness five, so these wound me on threes. Okay. One wound. Ah, oh, that's all right. I got one wound left on my squig. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna bring us a stop attack. That's the same initiative. So if we're able to kill each other here, that'd be kind of be kind of uh, fitting, I suppose. Yeah, we're down to one wound each. So I only have D three stop attacks though. Okay, D three. It's gonna be one. One. And it's strength six, so it wounds. But okay. you do have heavy armor against it. Okay. So Normally these have AP. Oh. Oh, you have two. You had to make. Did I make two of them or one of them? You got a, it. was D three, so you got one. I got one. That's right. So did you make your save? I uh, probably not. No, you, you get a regen though. You get a chaotic you get a regen. giant regen. Regen, save. regen. Six up regen. Oh, six up. Okay, so, so I don't. Your guy is gonna die, but you have your stomp attacks back. All right. It's D six of them. You got two of them. Two. Strength six. Wounding on three then. So oh, two. two of them. I have heavy armor on a mangler. Yes, they have heavy armor. My mangler is also dead. <laughs> So we just stop each other at the end. 
Uh, yeah, we literally just, we're like, you're, you're jumping up and down on me. I'm kicking at you. There's the timber rule, but we're both dead anyway, so the timber rule doesn't matter that much. I'd like to imagine they go down in a lover's embrace. Uh, that, that's very, very good. <laughs> a fitting in for both of them. Yeah. Bye bye. That's all I got. That's my turn three. Not bad. I mean, I, I actually had a lot of damage lined up on that Demon Prince. I'm not disappointed it didn't hurt him. I'm actually impressed with the rolls, but I got to. Well, I guess I kind of planned to deal with him, but it's not a great plan. And this guy's probably going to run away. So uh, you get to have fun in your third turn. I got two more fanatics. So this happens first thing before anything else. Start a turn sub phase. Only two fanatics. I didn't have the points for a third. Ah, uh, so you get a pay, They're pay 25 points each. Yeah, I can see why. They, they, they're they are quite devastating. Good. They're quite good. Yes, they're quite good. Best they've ever been, actually. Yeah. Uh, definitely should have probably made the room to get that third one in here, but I figured five was more than enough to show off that kind of mechanic. Yeah. You could go pretty heavy into them if you want to. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead. Boop, ba -dee boop. One right there, just in case you get so bold as to charge. And the other one also right there. They both have to be within three of the unit. They kind of hop out and then land there. Now on to Gaze of the Gods, starting with my Demon Prince over here. I'm going to roll for that. See what he gets at the four, Luca. Four was uh, more tentacles sprouting out of him. Ooh. That's an extra weapon skill, which is a little redundant, but nice to have. I suppose, yeah. He just hits on twos more. Better than a one. <laughs> Better than a one. Now for my Exalted Hero. See what the Gaze of the Gods is a five. That's Dark Fury. He's just more attacked. Oh, man. He's just so pissed. I'm going to mark that with one of these beautiful mini Wargaming Forge tokens we're using as an extra attack. That is seven attacks on that bad boy now. Now on to the charge phase, yes. which is my favorite. You know, it's the corn phase, essentially. The, right? the one you must interact in the most. I, I accept the must. Yeah. Uh, okay, so starting with this Demon Prince over here. Yeah, you got two paths before you with him. I see one path. You see one path? I, I, I just see one, Luke. <laughs> I, I want to I want to go for all the bodies. Gotcha. So yep. I'm, I'm gonna have to pivot, go in there, and then my marauders, same thing. So they're both gonna charge. Yep. yep. Your gobbles there. They're both gonna. Yep. And then on this side, uh, my chaos warriors are gonna go into this squad of goblins. Yeah. Yeah. So that's... we got we got them lined up to skirt around the tree here. Yeah. So gonna this... hit fanatics. And yeah, I'm gonna have to go through the fanatics, right? Yep. Yeah. It's a necessary evil, but that's yeah. fine. It is what it is, right? Yeah. I'm gonna hold, obviously, with my goblins here. They're gonna throw nets at you, hopefully, to try to reduce your strength, which actually doesn't matter too much, but we're gonna try and make it matter. Starting with the Marauders right now, rolling 2d6, picking the highest, which is two, and adding it to their movement characteristics. With six? So they're going eight. Oh, okay, gotcha, yep. Yeah, and then I will just pivot on the spot a bit, uh, and then I have... Uh, the yeah, you got, you got essentially more than enough for this guy to be on this corner, yeah. Okay. All right, so that's there. Boom. Now for the Boom. Demon Prince. For him, I essentially don't need to roll because I'm within the movement characteristic. Correct. So then I'll just pivot and go here, right there, not forgetting his token. Now that I should have wheeled and then moved. Same difference. Same difference. But you'd, be, you'd be in that exact same position. And then over on this side, the Chaos Warriors will go into the Goblins and I'll roll for their charge to see what they get. That's a six. That's good. You know what? I, I didn't know what, sometimes that kind of charge can be complicated. Thank, thankfully that you rolled high, they're effectively going to move forward six, wheel a couple, and then go forward the rest of their inches. Or they're going to go forward like four or five or something. Yeah. I'm just going to move these guys out of the way. So it'll be so four inches forward. Us. Yep. There it is. Boom. So we went forward about four, wheeled two, went forward two more, and we're in the line of the door. But there are going to be two fanatic hits, and they're about right here, right here. So they're going to pop out here and here-ish. So we're going to pop out here and here? Yep. Actually, I might as well put them down. Uh, funny little thing, this poor little goblin got dragged along when the marauders charged because I put him in the movement tray of them. He's about here. <laughs> He's somewhere back. Got to resolve those two fanatic hits that are popping through the Chaos Warriors. Uh, easy enough to do both at the same time. It's going to be 2d6 hits at strength 5. Oh, there's five of them. These kill the warriors on twos because they'll burn right through their armor. Four warriors die as they charge in. Ooh. Four warriors just dead. All right, so now we go to the compulsory move phase. Our fanatics get to move now. They're controlled for the turn they come out, so this fanatic's gonna go through at this angle, try to avoid the shaman. We're gonna roll 2d6 to see the move. If he rolls doubles, he dies. He goes seven, though. And that's just gonna go to about right here. And it's gonna be d6 hits at strength five. That's gonna be three of them that die on twos. Ouch. Three more go down. Ouch. Luca. I know, I know. Ah. Fanatics are going to be a problem. Not a problem, but they're going to be scary. This We got one more fanatic who's going to go at this angle just to avoid his fanatic buddy. Again, if I roll doubles, he will go down, though. Okay, he's going to go through the unit. He's a happy little fanatic. <laughs> I mean, so far you've taken out seven warriors. D6 more to go. 
It's three. A dead on twos. Ah, three more. Three more ten. You took a ten. There's a fanatics. Oh my goodness. I know it's, it's rough. Dang. Look at that. Uh, that's a lot. That, that's that was a lot. You oh. only that really need this guy and a couple of warriors to cleave through this, though. I mean, no. sure. It looks like it, it looks like a lot now, but. Once you'll see what, how much damage they're about to do, and then this is gonna be not great for me, also. <laughs> remember what two I, dudes? That was only two. Remember when I said these guys don't fight honorably? Yeah, they, That's, <laughs> now I remember every every underhand attack they can to get ahead, and I'm still feeling a little nervous with what I'm about to fight. That's what you know. As much as that that's that is the case, it's I'm actually kind of happy to see that because I was like, what the? You're it, just gonna roll me? It yeah. seems like it's a rolling, but wait, no, that was only two fanatics. Now yeah. I'm scared again. So it's like, okay, uh, that, that's good. Two more to go. Mm. I'm gonna go ahead and go with this guy. He's gonna roll a scatter first. He's gonna ah, go, he's gonna go to the center. Ah. Doubles, he's dead though. Uh, eight, okay. You have a single double. Not yet, yeah, you show me that. Where's he going? Right there, eh, whoop. Okay, so and that's not too bad with this, this guy here. Other dude, other dude. Oh, he's going somewhere else. He's yeah. going very far away from the battle. And that looks like an eight also. Okay, so he's, this is this way. <laughs> I love these guys, they're so. <laughs> I got the burning question. Yeah. How many of these dudes, how many fanatics can you bring in an army? Uh, well, it's every night goblin unit you bring, which is minimum 20 in their size, uh -huh. can bring up to three fanatics. You can bring little guys with art bows if you want. They have fanatics in them. You can, these guys are just spearmen with fanatics. I like wow. spearmen because they're kind of defensive. But yeah, you can bring a lot. If you only play night goblins, like only night goblins and like night goblin characters, you can bring a lot of fanatics. That's a na I don't know if that's a nasty list, but that'd be kind of fun to play. That is something I plan on playing once we get more. <laughs> we only have 15 fanatics, so. That's a lot, 15 doesn't. Five, five units of night goblins. Would, that's, that's what the requirement would be. I see, that's, that's a tax. Correct, the night goblins are the tax for the fanatics. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so just to jump ahead a little bit here for combat, my night goblins have netters, so they're just gonna throw nets at your units. Uh, this works on a two up. It, technically, net to always work. You're just on a one. I net myself. Then it really works. Then it really works. Yeah. It will reduce the strength of the unit targeted by the nets by one. It artifi artificially inflates my toughness. But <laughs> if I fail, my my strength goes down by one. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll start with the night goblins onto the warriors of chaos on a two up. He. That works. And then the night goblins into the marauders. On the other side. It works. All right. They're both covered in nets. Wow. It only matters a little bit, but okay. hopefully enough. All right, so I'm going to go with the unit now. Yeah. And I believe there's challenges, so obviously I'm going to challenge with, with... Okay, you can... I wouldn't recommend challenging with the Exalted Hero, though. Only because uh, he's better off just carving up the unit. I don't think a goblin is worthy of his attention. Ah, uh, so you're saying he's not worthy of yeah. the corn challenge there. Yeah, there's no honor in a challenge with a goblin. So seven skulls versus one, one. is yeah. actually what you're saying? They're all, the, they're all the same skull, right? It's like there's no, uh, th there's not a oh, worthy okay. skull among no, them. It's, it's all the same. <laughs> there's not a worthy skull among that unit. However, my goblin champion will issue a challenge, and you can just accept it with your warrior chaos champion if you don't want to. Sure, we'll you go with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, They're yeah. already touching yeah. bases already, so it's perfect. Okay, so I gotta go with the exalted uh, hero first. So seven attacks, hitting on twos, which is seven hits. Okay. And then wounding on twos, which is seven wounds. Now he's minus one because the chaos rune sword means I have a six up save because I got light armor and shield. Okay. I need sixes. I save two of them. Five <laughs> goblins go down to the exalted hero's one sweep of his sword. Yeah, that's uh, about one of your fanatics. Yeah, no. So we're gonna pull five from back here. I know it's five from the front are dead. My champion's still alive, but in a challenge. And so is my uh, big flag up there. Speaking of my big flag, uh, I'd recommend putting a tax into him with some of the warriors of chaos if he can, because yes. he's, he's worth a lot of points to kill. So, okay. Uh, you got, you got a couple of them actually that can attack him, which is nice. These two here can direct attacks into him specifically. So let's do that then. And then everyone, uh, then you have the champion fighting the challenge, and then the remaining two warriors of chaos are just gonna carve up the unit a little bit. Them. Now on to my champion versus your champion. That's oh four attacks. You should be hitting me on two. And that's four hits. I'm only about skill two. Wounding on fours, because you lowered my strength. Yeah, you're strength three right now. Okay, so <laughs> that's uh, two wounds. All right, well, I got a six up save. 
Uh, you, kill, you kill my champion, exactly. Okay. Perfect, perfectly efficient. And then onto your banner. Now there's a dude right in front of him, and I have to attack him because he's right in front? Yeah, we decided we wanted just the one warrior who's going to attack the banner. Yeah, because he has to. Three Ouch. attacks there, and that's twos, you said? Uh, this will be fours to hit. Fours to hit? It's a big difference. He's got two more weapon skill. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so your weapon skill five to my four. So threes to hit. Sorry, threes to hit. You had a, you, you're okay. good, though, yeah. All right, so that's uh, a wound. And not a wound? No, yeah, no wound, no wound. Yeah, I'm T4 as well, so harder to wound him. Okay, so no wound. No wound at all. All right, so the other five into the rest of the unit. Yes. Then. So that, uh, for these guys, it's twos. and fours. All right, so that's five hits, and then fours! That's only one wound. Six up. Oh! oh! All right, so I got five goblin spearmen able to attack from the back rank, mostly, because he kind of overkilled them a little bit. Mm. Uh, these are hitting you on fives, because I'm, wep I'm weapon skill two. Not I got one. zero Six. hits. But my goblin big bat, a big box, he's got that big flag, he's got a great weapon too, he's gonna try and hit you with it. I just don't, I got three attacks with that banner. He hits you on fours, cause you are a superior swordsman, obviously. <laughs> we got a hit. He's strength six though, cause he's got a great weapon. I'm just gonna reroll that. Uh, no, not a, not, a, not a thing in there, that's not good. Combat resolution. All right, so I killed six dudes. Yes. I have a banner and I'm closed order. Uh, that should be a it for yourself. For me. Now for you, uh, you, I, I you have two banners. Yes. And your closed order. And you have one, two, three flanks. Ranks. Ranks. And so that means that's a cool. difference of what, two? Uh, so by one by two? Yeah, two in this case, uh, just because of the difference there. Now, granted, I can you normally only claim two rank bonuses. They have a rule called uh, Horde, which lets them claim one more. Okay. There's a lot of them, a lot of yeah. goblins. So you do win by two. Now, I do have the Warband rule, which increases my leadership by my rank bonuses, which is currently three. Uh, I'm only leadership five, though. So, I'm up to leadership eight. I lost by two. I'm looking to roll an eight or less, which I do. In fact, I rolled a six, which means I give ground because that's the difference there, yeah. Do I cause fear? They do not, no. Ah. Now, we are simply going to give ground. I'm just gonna put that guy there to show it. So you go back two inches? Then? I'm gonna go back to boop. And you have to follow up this corn. So you're just gonna go right on up in Is there. Is frenzied? Yes, sir. And you keep your frenzy too. Nice this fight. This fight over here. Same thing, would you like to issue any challenges? Yes, I, I always, so uh, I guess that would be, I mean, my general wants to. Wants to issue a challenge. Well, I got a goblin champion in there that could, it's just one of the same situation where you just want him to cleave through my unit, but you got a marauder champion in there that can accept it when I inevitably issue with my goblin champion. I see, yeah, yeah. yeah I also want to cleave. It's I your best to interest to get combat resolutions. You just want to churn it up. Yeah, we see how important that is. So I think we're going to go that route again. So our champions are going to be right here. We'll have a great honorable duel between them. Uh, you could, if you want, use your demon prince to try and, I have a goblin boss right in front of him. If you want to beat him up, that would lower my leadership a little bit, actually quite a bit. But uh, you could also just try and cleave into the unit and get combat res too. It's really up to you. Okay. Well, he, regardless, he goes, Demon Prince, I got eight attacks in total with all my upgrades put together. Hit you on twos. So that's seven hits so far. These are just all into my unit. All into just the unit. Right through I'm this. just going to cleave into the unit, and that is a seven wounds. Same, uh, the minus one still, it's just the basic and sorcerer's weapon. Look at six ups. You said seven? Seven. Okay, well, let's see. No taco cats. Boom, boom, boom. You killed nice. seven. Nice. It's just seven dead. That is all of this just gone. They step up, die, step up, die, step up, <laughs> die. It's beautiful. Amazing. Uh, Marauders will be next on initiative as well. All right, let's go champion to champion. He's got three attacks. Oh, that's all hits. That's scary. Three's yeah. to hit me. And then three's to wound, yeah? Yeah, because of the nets. Only one. Ooh, that's enough to kill him. I don't have to save your minus two on okay. play. That's right. champion dead. And now for the rest into the rest of your unit. Yep, there's five more Marauders here with two attacks each because of corn. So threes, and they're all hit so far. <laughs> And three is to wound. This unit dusted. It okay, that's decent. That's another, uh, that's eight wounds. There's dead. They're AP2 on the flail. So wow. Actually, I can just pull this whole thing. That's five, six, seven, eight. That, that's that, what I like to see with corn. That's maybe. the way to do it. That's that was the, with the Marauders, too. That wasn't even with the, like, the Chaos Warriors. That's why I like Marauders and Flail so much because they're, so, they're so much cheaper than Warriors. So much. But they don't have armor or anything, right? But like, oh. look, I, 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 I bullied them all game. It's like I only need my one fighting rank to get through you. That's true. Now, you killed so many of my goblins that I can't fight back except for my boss. Uh, right, my... because they move up, and when they move up, they don't. They can't Correct. fight. Correct. Awesome. Yeah. Even you, well, usually spears always usually get to do their attacks unless you kill, like, 12 dudes. <laughs> yeah. You have to actually start killing into the second rank to stop it, which you did. Because they attack behind the rank. That's the they, second they rank. Just keep re they kind of, like, step forward and just start killing me, and then, it, you know, the ground evens out back in the middle again. But I got three attacks into the Marauders because I can't really hurt the Demon Prince that well with this guy. 
No, if I roll all fives, I'll be mad. Because I needed fives to hit the Demon Prince. Because uh, I think he's web skill nine. Uh, these are two. That's two dead Marauders. Two dead, all right. Well, Combrez here isn't as important because you killed uh, 15, 16 wounds worth of guys. You have a banner in closed order, so you're at 18. Yeah. I have a rank and a banner, and I killed two guys with closed order. So I'm going to reduce that to 12 or 13. I have leadership five on my big boss, and my warband will trigger for one rank still. So I'm leadership six. You just want me to roll a seven or more, which is probably going to happen here. Okay. Oh, no. my God. That's... I fall back in good order, but now I don't give ground. So I'm going to roll 2d6, go the highest, and you have to pursue with both because of corn. Okay. So I'm going to go five inches directly away, and then we're going to go ahead and figure out what that looks like here. All right, so I've already figured out where they're going to go. They're going to run from the center mass of the Marauder unit and the center mass of my unit, which will be almost a direct line right towards uh, my board edge here. I've already figured out where they're going to end up. It's right here. After they, That's the position I'd want them in after they reform as well. And then uh, the corn units have to uh, follow up okay. or pursue. Pursuing, rolling 2d6 for that, getting a four. Uh, who was that for? The, uh, that was for Demon Prince. Yeah, that, the four makes him in. So he will go, he'd be in no problem. And then roll up the Marauders as well. Ooh, getting a six. Ooh, a six would probably do it. Yep. All right, so they wheel, wheel. They one and they got about five inches to go. Something like that. Oh, hey, look at that. Boom, so. boom, boom. Ha <laughs> ha, we got accidental contact over here. Interesting. Uh, so this kind of, Honestly, and like that. This thing goes like this. You're just fighting both now. Okay. So Act this does hit your bolt thrower? Actually, it hits the bolt thrower completely first. So it would just be a full up charge on this bolt thrower. However, you'd probably want it like this. Done. Yep. Boom. Realizing they connect the bolt thrower first. That's it for my turn, Luca. Easy. Nice. We'll jump over to yours. Uh, for the conjuration stuff, I have two hexes, but they cannot target units in close combat. So your rampaging coordinate warriors here are safe from my magic. Excellent. The only thing I can do is try to rally my Night Goblin Warboss over here. I believe he's leadership six. Is he back in it? No, he's he's still not back in it. He's nah. You know what? He fought a Demon Prince once in his life. His stick is done. He's done. He's out of here. Excellent. Ah, uh, that means I got nothing else to do in my strategy phase. I'm going to go right to charge phase, which is uh, finished. I got none of that to do. Uh, then my compulsory moves, that's my four fanatics, and my Night Goblin Warboss is going to move as well. But he's fleeing, so he's just going to keep running towards the board edge. 3d6 movement, because he's got random movement 3d6. He's out of here. That's 11. Oh, wow. Let me just see what that 11 looks like. He is uh, eight and a quarter inches away from the board, so he has vacated the battlefield, everyone, <laughs> as points for you killed. Excellent. Fanatic number one, who's off on his own, is going to go towards the other fanatics because he misses his brothers. Uh, he'll go seven. Boo, 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 boo. And then we got three more to go who can mob up my uh, shaman there. I'll start with this one. Trying this guy here. Oh, he's gonna hit the shaman. If unless I roll a double and die, I roll a nine. <laughs> ah, not a single double in the whole game. Bye, bye, shaman. Let me see. So you go through him. He goes through him. He's gonna see where he ends up. He's gonna go up near the trees here. So he's gonna go boom, 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 boom near the trees. And my shaman's gonna take d6 strength five hits. He's gonna get a taste of his own medicine. <laughs> d6 hits on the shaman. He's only got three wounds, so that's enough to kill him. I guess I got three hits here. Strength five against his toughness of four. Shaman's dead. Oh. That's my general. <laughs> Boom. And my loss of vindictive glare to try and deal with the demon. That, you know what? I'm now now I'm happy that the fanatics are here. Correct. The wow. fanatics are perfect. They are literally one of the best elements of the game in general, I think. They can, be, they can feel a little oppressive and random. Or sorry, like a little annoying to play against, but like I just lost my general. So <laughs> yeah, this is the double-edged sword, absolutely. But I'd, br I'd run them every time. Every time. Like without fail. Yeah, without absolutely. Fail. I love these guys. Fanatic number three, can you go kill a friend? Uh, he's going to go off into nowhere unless I roll a double here. Get a double, get a double, get a double. He goes eight, nine. These are fast, too. They're just all over the place. Not a single double. There we go. Boop. Boop. One final fanatic near the woods. Uh, oh, he's going towards the other fanatic, it looks like. Can he possibly hit him? Uh, he could if I roll a six. Let me see here. Does he hit himself, dude? How does that work? So he's gonna go. So they hit each other. Awesome. So they rolled d6 strength five hits against one. They were one moon with toughness three, so a single one will do it on a two up. They don't automatically die like they used to. They have to roll the wound to kill each other, I believe, but uh, very likely it'll kill each other. I'm gonna start with the one that hit, the one that just moved, who hit his buddy, is gonna kill him five times, it looks like. Here's three dice. <laughs> He's dead. He's all right. And then I'm going to roll for the guy who just moved. He's going to suffer five hits. Oh, look, he's probably dead, too, with four. Yep, he's dead, too. <laughs> Mutually assured destruction. 
<laughs> that is a fanatic's life. Oh my goodness. Uh, so we're gonna go right to shooting, which I don't have any. Uh, well, I would have had remaining moves, but my shaman's dead. The yeah. shaman was gonna move and vindictive glare him, but now no longer. No more. No. So and this bolter doesn't have anything to shoot at. So we're gonna go right to combat, which I don't love. <laughs> and uh, I guess we'll start with the one on the far left. Why not? Come back. We... Yeah. This one over here, not loving. No, I gotta throw nets at you. So I'm gonna quickly throw a net at you. Maybe we'll get lucky. Goblet, so another net, so I'm out of my... The whole unit's got nets, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep, so they get netted, I'm just going to throw the one on the Demon Prince as well, even though it doesn't matter. All right, good good job. <laughs> um, Just for practice. Yeah, I don't, there's like, I. there's no point in really issuing any challenges here, because I don't really want my BSB in a challenge, and you would just probably beat him up with the champion anyways, so we can go ahead and go right to fighting. You get to go first with that work, because you made that, per well, follow, well, you're just higher initiative than me in general. Exalted. Hero first, we got seven attacks hitting on twos, so that's six hits, and then wounding on twos as well. This is into the unit, by the way. Yeah. And that's five wounds. I got a six up save against that with light armor and shields. If I could, every save I make here really matters. I make none. Five, five goblins lose their lives. Excellent. Bye bye, my little friends. Five go down, and then uh, we got a bunch of chaos warriors here attacking. Just one is gonna be doing a supporting attack, the rest are free attack. Now I'm gonna target uh, your BSB. Yeah, with uh, two of the warriors in base contact with them. Yes. Six attacks. Six attacks, so hitting on three. Physical up skill five. Ooh, and then wounding on five. Your strength three because of the nets. And that's nothing. Okay. Getting nothing. But for the rest of the warriors of chaos, which we'll just go right into right now, it's eight attacks. Eight attacks from all of them. There's one supporting attack and seven other attacks because of a champion. And these are hitting on threes, yeah? Uh, these are twos, actually. Well, then they all hit. Yep. And then wounding you. Uh, fours. Because of the nets. That's a little better. That's five wounds. Okay. I got light armor shields. Five up. That's three dead. Okay. And that is three dead goblins. And then I get to fight back. I have three goblins that can attack back with their thrusting spears. They hit you on fives. Nope. Uh, and then I have a goblin big boss with his great weapon attacking the unit. He hits you on fours. One. One. He's strength six. Uh, that's wounded minus two. It goes right through your heavy armor. One dead warrior. Ooh. <laughs> so... Uh, I beat you by six when we do all the calculations. Effectively six, yeah. I'm I'm leadership five, six, seven, because I got two rank bonuses still. Yep. Oh. Oh, we fall back in good order. All right. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna do my fall back in good order. Boop. Uh, I go two. <laughs> and I. Uh, you just go ahead and pursue. You yeah, got to. Uh, You're uh, probably gonna catch them with an eight. I think I get you. So they're effectively gonna run this way. They're gonna go. They would end up reforming somewhere. Oh, geez, I got stuck on a tree. They're gonna end up reforming somewhere around here, and then you just wheel and catch them, so you just go ahead and place them in contact with me there. The, the base of the trees we're not too worried about here. I think we can all see where this game's kind of going here, so I'm gonna uh, show off something kind of cool, and we're gonna let the Bolter do the next fight with the Marauders. If they beat it, they can overrun into these Night Goblins over here and fight again. So I have higher initiative, I'll go first? Yep, you got four guys in base contact, plus a couple supporting attacks. And the champions there as well, so 11 attacks. Yep. Hitting on threes. And killing on twos. Uh, okay, decent. So that's uh, nine so far, and then twos to kill. <clears throat> Ooh, okay, excellent, that's eight. Yeah, there's only three wounds. There's like two or three wounds on there. I'm not surprised they're dead. And go ahead and roll me an overrun. Okay. Because you're corn. So I roll 2d6 here? Yep. And that's a five. So you're gonna you be coming in contact with this unit, which means it just counts as a charge. So you go like this. Actually, it'd be a charge in the flank. So, boop, collide there effectively, and then align. That's what I wanted to show off. It was a cool flank charge. X. So I have to pick this fight next. So the Demon Prince, but there's a new contender in the fight. That means they, that, this is what allows them to fight twice, but a unit can never pursue more than once a combat phase. So hypothetically, say this combat was over, they would not be able to move again. Even, even if they're marked by corn, they stay right there. Okay. And then this demon, this demon prince could overrun, but, and then he could get into another combat. That'd be kind of cool, like just chaining into different combats. That would be. Uh, you definitely get to go first with pretty much everything here though. So it'd be demon prince and then marauder. Eight attacks with my general. And that's two. Oh, I got four ones, Luca. Oh, wow. Ah. Oh. Okay. Okay, okay now wounding you on twos. Okay, that's four wounds at least. I got six up saves because you only got AP one on him. Light armor shield. That's four dead still. Okay. All right, all right, all right. And that'll be these four. Go down, and then the Marauders get to go. Uh, that does disallow his one attack, but that's okay. He still gets a supporting attack, I should say. Yeah, yeah. but you just lose like one attack. 11 attacks there from the Marauders. Yeah. Reason threes. Technically, I should have thrown nets before this, but that's okay. 
You want to just throw them? No, no, it's all good. You, you clean them up. Two's to kill. Two's to kill. That, yeah, that's good. That's seven. All right, that's seven dead. You got one, two, three, four, five, and then it's six, seven. Wow. Oh, yeah. And then the Marauders would cl close on in as uh, they don't get drawn out of combat, and the big boss gets to attack, uh, gets to, he's going to attack the Demon Prince. Hitting on... Uh, I'm going to roll this just in case I hit on fours. It's a wound as well. Go Throw me a four board save. It doesn't matter too much. You're good. All right. Good. All right. I'm going to go four. I don't know if you're nine. You might be eight. I was too lazy to look. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same difference. Like you're accepting your fate or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I definitely lost this combat by a substantial amount. Yeah. I need double ones to stay. Even if I roll within five, because that's all my leadership is, yeah. I would break because you double outnumber me still. Okay. So we're just looking for a double one then. Just casual double one. Oh, we naturally break all the same. Mm -hmm. We would run, run, this is where it's kind of cool too, because now we run directly away from the Marauders, which would maybe allow the Demon Prince to chain into that and then just tie that up for one more turn as well. We wouldn't be able to resolve that fight. But if, at least they're in. Correct, and then on the next turn, you just, bleh, yep. just finish it off, right? So let's see what these, uh, these uh, little goblins run. They're gonna go eight inches. And then you go with the Demon Prince first. He'll go, well, five. And then the Marauders are gonna go, Six. Six. And they're not going to catch them. All right. We flee this direction directly away from the Marauders being the larger unit. And it does go through the War Machine, which could cause it to panic. Uh, and then the Demon Prince would be rolling towards them. And he rolled high enough to actually roll into the uh, Goblin Bolt Door here. And these guys just go six. They don't really, they don't do anything at all, really. But he's going to charge that. And that's where they end up. Now, before that Demon Prince goes into the Bolt Thrower, War Machines do fall back in good order and all that stuff. They're negative one to it because uh, they're War Machines. So falling back in good order because he... Oh, I got to do my panic check first. That's it, panicking. Okay. Because it was fled through by another unit. And then it falls back four inches because of this. But it does fall back in good order away from the Demon Prince, which it just means it's going to effectively pop through these guys and reform just around there. And then this Demon Prince would end up pursuing there, and then these guys are gonna go about six forward and pursue that same unit of goblins from earlier, which I should probably close up a little bit, but all the same. Top of the turn here. So this is Gaze of the Gods for Demon Prince. Uh, we get a five there, which- Dark Fury, that's an extra attack. Extra attack. Nine, nine attacks now. Nine attacks, okay, and now for the uh, Exalted Hero, that's a two. Uh, that is plus one initiative until your next turn. So okay, he's even faster. Is he even faster? Two, two, two and three are negligible because they only last round. Two is initiative, three is toughness. Yeah. One is the permanent one. So one, four, five, and six are all permanent. Two and three are just a battle round. Mm. On to charging here. So let's go Demon Prince into your goblins. Just uh, they, They're going to flee because they're already fleeing. They're going to go five, nine, which is kind of cool. So they go, the way it works in this edition, they go, they're going to pa panic this thing as they run through it. They're going to go up to the, the wall here, and they're going to pivot on the spot and start going down this direction. Cool. So it's going to be about five there, pivot, and they're going to go about four here. So they're going to end up generally over here, and the Demon Prince just has to catch them from his current position, which is rather easy, obviously. Okay, so I'll just roll for that then. And then... That's a nine, so I think I get you. You're going to go 18, you're going to catch them. I have to resolve the panic on... It's like a chain reaction thing. We're going to panic the bolt thrower. It actually holds... As a goblin, I think it holds at four, five even, which doesn't really matter too much because it would just go up against the wall anyways and just uh, line there. The demon prince would catch them, and then you could you would also declare a charge with the marauders into the bolt thrower. 100%, which yeah. I'll also roll for right now. And getting a four plus their movement. and That'd be eight... So effectively, even if the bolter is like around there, they would catch it. So these guys move at the same time. Demon Prince would come over to here, catch them. Marauders would go forward, catch him there-ish. Generally something like that. This thing would move around, not do much. This Fanatic. Could it catch anything? Not from its position, but we might be able to see if it dies. See what Mr. Fanatic does. He's gonna go well, towards his other buddy. We're gonna get a seven on the Fanatic. I'm gonna go to there. And then we got one more fanatic up here in the woods. Mr. Fanatic here is gonna go towards the combat. Oh, oh. But he might always still roll doubles. Nope, he's going eight. Now, very low amount of doubles here. So one is six typically, or all the time, I guess. And uh, only lost one. So let's do Marauders into your bolt thrower. Might as well quickly finish that off. Hitting on threes and then wounding on twos. Killing on twos. Oh, killing on twos. Uh, I think he's good. 
yeah, yeah, that's right. We're just gonna go ahead and bye bye. And then they would have to overrun, but the Demon Prince is there, so they could test to reform. It's not overly important because we just have one more fight to resolve. Oh no, this battle now. Got my net still. Do I get myself? Do I get Ooh. myself? Yeah. I do! The finally. goblins are strength two, and your warriors are strength four. <laughs> finally. <laughs> uh, I'll go first with my uh, exalted hero there. He uh, hits on twos. Good. Uh, Okay, well, I guess a lot of misses. I don't think it matters too much. Wounding on, or killing on twos, and it's three. Uh, only three, eh? Only I, three. I do get a six up save still. I okay. got light armor shield against his, if you want. Okay, that's three dead. And that is three. Not so happy goblins down for the count, and you just got a bunch of, one warrior has to attack the battle standard bear, and then you have four that are free to muck up the unit. Done. Onto the battle standard bear. Let's do that. Uh, I only four, got one hit. Fours and fours, yep. And one wound. Okay, well, I got, that goes right through. He's got, he's only got light armor. So that's the wound on him. A wound, he's got two wounds? He's got, got two wounds, yeah. Ah! You were, that, you were that close, yeah. Now for the rest, into the uh, rest of the unit here. Um, and that's hitting on threes. Uh, these are twos and uh, Why do I get threes. messed up every time? Okay, so, yeah, so hitting on twos and wounding on threes, yeah? Oop. That's a little better, I suppose. Six. Six, wounds. not bad, six wounds. I do one correction, the battle center bear technically would get a six up save because the pair of hand weapons don't get AP, but he still takes the wound there. And you said six? Yep. Uh, six let me tell you, I got six six ups coming up. Nope, they're close though. Actually, they have five ups because you don't get AP. They have uh, better. Three die though. Okay. And was it, was it six? It was a lot. Three, no, it was only three because I made three, three saves, that's right. That's right. Aha, you don't outnumber me. Word. I have. Four thrusting spears that can attack back. Your mighty weapon skill oh. only allows me to hit on that five, and I'm strength two, so I need a six. Not quite. We do have our big boss with his great weapon, who's gonna try and get on in there. Not a single hit in there either, so that is it for the combat. All right, combat res. Uh, well, you killed six of my guys. You're closed order and have a banner, so you're a total of eight. eight. I have two banners, closed order and a rank. So I got four, because I didn't do any damage. Okay, so four. Uh, four, oh, and uh, you wounded my battle standard bearer. I forgot to count that, so actually I lose by five. Uh, my leadership is six, because I have the banner and a rank in there. So you don't double outnumber me yet. I want to roll six or less. Hey, at least we're consistent right. with the falling back in good order. It's, that's not a give ground, by the way. That's a full fall back in good order, which I might as well roll up, I guess. I'm going to go five, and you'll, you'll you roll 2d6 because you got to pursue. Five. five. There we go. Yeah, you just, well, you catch them directly. Yeah. No, this is directly away in this case. Okay. So we happens. fall back in good order. We rally back there. This is us running directly away and rallying to face the enemy. And then they must pursue because they're Mark of Corn. They have frenzy. And I didn't. So I didn't lose any guys there. Uh, and even if I did, one or two, uh, it, it, that looks like it's just gonna kind of. Go well, on. even you could. You're still even. You still have two ablative wounds before you even start losing your attacks against me. I think we can. And at this point too, because I don't have more than two ranks, my spears will never get to fight back. Yeah. Once you kill the front, front rank off. We could probably uh, end it there, because there's only going to be one more turn left of this fight, and then that's you cleaning it. I'm going to assume they're all dead, because you're eventually going to catch them, or they're going to run off the board. It's one of the two. Yeah, if you say it's a safe victory there, then I think that's an epic handshake. Yeah, that was outstanding. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And paired with this battle report you just watched, you better believe we continue the old world action in the Mini Wargaming Vault. This will be available to our YouTube and our Vault members as a reminder. The match will be between the Vampire Counts and the Wood Elves with Steve and Luca at the helm. Now, if you're not a member and you want to check out this battle report, all you have to do is click on the link down below to sign up for a seven day free trial where you'll have access to it, as well as the rest of the content we have in the vault, including other old world battle reports and many more to come. Thanks again for checking out this video, everyone. Enjoy it. Leave some feedback down below and I'll catch you all next time very soon. Thank you very much for tuning in to my second game of Old World. Luca, thanks for playing and no problem. running us through everything. And uh, it, it was good. I, I, I mean, that was I saw some corn do some corn things. So. It's a pleasure to play goblins, always is. Yeah, no and Maddox are insane. <laughs> I, they, could be, they could be a little, like, stressful uh, to, to run into. But, like, you did the right thing. You just, like, disregarded it, just blew right through it, just to try to get in. And, like, right through. the dragon ogres going down were pretty important because you pulled the initial fanatics out so that they didn't hit, like, the demon prince or the marauders or something. Yeah. The dragon ogres already did their job early on. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, for this, uh, if you are a Mini Wargaming Vault member, specifically a Silver Vault member, you get 20% off the forge. So looking at these trays here, the movement trays and the movement tray converters, be sure to check that out. Links below in the description. And also a huge thanks to Wayland Games for sponsoring this battle report. And thanks to them, we're able to do the setup of the new studio and proceed forward with even more content and change the whole setup here. So 
Massive thanks to them. Get your old world miniatures by Warhammer at Wayland. They have worldwide shipping, massive stock quantities, competitive pricing, and they're friends who you're going to want to play with because having visited them in person, they yeah. have a massive gaming space and it's just all around a lot of fun. So thank you again. Happy Wargaming. See you in the next video.